if you're a type 2 diabetic, uh, they will prescribe you, what is it, metformin. <clears throat> and what that does is it it's an actual drug that they make in a lab that does pretty much the same thing as berberine. And that makes your body more sensitive to the insulin that you produce. Because if you eat the three meals a day, what you're doing in the morning, you eat, your insulin spikes, then it comes back down, does it at lunch, comes back down. And while you're young, that insulin, will, your blood sugar will drop because your body is sensitive to your own insulin. But mm -hmm. as you get older, the, insulin, the sugar comes down. It doesn't come down as low as it used to be. And it's like an, an upward moving arch until you are stuck with walking around with a blood sugar north of 120 all the time. That is type 2 diabetes. Ideally, you want your blood sugar to be somewhere between 70 and 95-ish on the regular. And the more meals you eat, the less you're, the more you're going to screw that up. Now, <clears throat> I will usually take berberine first thing in the morning with my regiment, and I take it right before I go to bed. Now, if I'm going to somebody's house during the holidays and I know I'm going to be throwing back food, cake, whatever, something with a lot of carbs and sugar. I will usually take two berberine before I actually eat those meals. And it, it does it does blunt the blood sugar spikes. It does yeah. work. Also, now, uh, it is an appetite suppressant, so keep that in mind. It'll help from Tourette's of the elbow as well throughout the day. Talking about berberine. I heard you. I heard you. Um, and it does. That uh, it is one of the, those things that uh, can uh, stunt uh, the uh, sugar spike. Um, I did work at GNC, um, but I am more off on my own now. And uh, anybody in the chat need anything, uh, hit me up. Um, I was just taking some notes on some of the things you were saying uh, from like the fatty liver, alcohol, all that type of stuff. Um, the liver, touching on what uh, Red Pill Rhino was saying. Um, <clears throat> you can actually reverse liver damage. Um, it's like one of the few organs that can, uh, you know, grow, uh, like grow back. So there's different types of diets like you're talking about. There's uh, and there's different types of vitamins and supplements. So first off, I wanted to talk about um, niacin. A lot of people talk about niacin as a detox. Uh, that is actually pretty hard on the liver. So I, uh, not something that I would, uh, over recommend just to put that out there. But, um, a couple things that you might want to uh, check out is uh, vitamin uh, vitamins Bs. Get uh, your B complex because it helps metabolize and break sugar down. Uh, vitamin A, which is also found in carrots because of the beta carotene that helps naturally detoxify your liver. Um, beets are another good one. And you can also get a supplement called uh, Super Beets. Uh, they're like gummies. Uh, beetroot. And, yep. Yeah. yeah, it is. Uh, that is a phenomenal, phenomenal um uh, vitamin and food. Um, Pop, you're talking about like how you drink your teas and all that. I, I have some of my own. A couple of concoctions people can make. Um, I want apple cider vinegar in the mornings. Mm -hmm. If uh, people get apple cider vinegar, and I recommend the Bragg's apple cider vinegar with the uh, yep. mother and the cayenne. Get the cayenne. Now, and a dash have, of lemon, too. <laughs> lemon and pink Himalayan salt. Get the rock course and like uh, if you scrounge that up, that actually helps uh, detoxify and flush. Like actually yeah. Another so, recommendation on that is use a straw if you don't like the taste. Uh, it also erodes enamel, so if I, you want to yep. avoid that, do, do yeah, you want exactly. Handle? This is hey, this hey. is how I do my apple cider vinegar. I take a shot glass and fill it halfway up with apple cider vinegar. Then I fill it to the the rest of it with extra virgin olive oil and i just throw it down mm -hmm. we're getting, we're getting the best of both worlds because that apple cider vinegar will help sensitize you to your own insulin mm -hmm. that uh olive oil will raise your hdl which is your high density uh, cholesterol and you get the benefits of the mediterranean diet without having to eat all the mediterranean food because most of the stuff that in the Mediterranean diet that's healthy for you is the olive oil. Yep. But yeah. Rhino, you, you mentioned drinking straws. I'm sorry, bro, but 
Yes. You are fined one homo suspicion point for violation of the man code morality statute. That's the <laughs> easiest way to do this. Get half a lemon. Keep lemons in your, you know, your house. Cut half a lemon, put the other in saran wrap for the next day. Half a lemon, squeeze it into a shot glass. Then fill up the rest with um, the olive oil. And, of course, put in your Himalayan, your your cayenne. It, it's it's nasty. Yep. I'm telling you, it's not oh, the it's best terrible. tasting thing. But it's, it'll help. And, it and, and as far as when we're talking about this stuff, it, it, some of you might be hesitant. Well, where do I find berberine? Uh, maybe you're opposed to this, but Amazon for like five bucks. OK, it's easy to get everything we're talking about. This is not crazy stuff. The the um, the bile salts that I'm talking about, most expensive thing, 32 bucks. OK, everything else like nine bucks, five bucks. All of this is super cheap, easy to get. You can have right. it sent to your door. The okay. next supplement I want to cover, and we all have this in our kitchen right now. Cinnamon. Ah, yes. yes. It's a spice. Now. Typically, the cinnamon that you do get that they use for, you know, uh, flavoring is made from a different species. The cinnamon Correct. bark is semi-toxic. Mm -hmm. You're going to have to get online and search for the type that isn't toxic. It's a little bit more expensive. But I will take cinnamon along with my berberine in the morning and at night because the cinnamon actually tricks your body into thinking there is more insulin there than there actually is because there's a chemical in the cinnamon which is very close to insulin specifically but, you want ceylon yes. as c-e-y-l-o-n cinnamon it is in this particular one sold on amazon um what i like to do here's how i do it you get your black coffee uh, i use a french press because i'm fancy <laughs> but okay. i grind my coffee in the morning um i put cinnamon ceylon cinnamon uh, as well as Monk fruit as a sweetener instead of sugar. Monk fruit, brown sugar, and the granulate. It is monk fruit, not sugar. Okay. Uh, it has erythritol in it. Then I add butter, appetite suppressant. So you've got the cinnamon, you've got the coffee for a little bit of energy boost, you've got the butter for appetite suppressant, you've got the cinnamon for everything we just discussed. Bam. And you've got the, the, the monk fruit apparently has some good properties to it as well for health. Um, also, may help help with inflammation and liver issues. So the monk fruit is actually beneficial as well. But it also adds sweetness to your coffee. Also, another, I drink that every morning, every morning. Another at, benefit to cinnamon is it also helps protect your kidneys. Mm, there you go. So you're getting a double whammy right there. The next one, and most of you have not heard about this one, bitter melon. Mm-hmm. They've been using bitter melon to treat type 2 diabetes in India and China for thousands of years. Yep. There you Again, go. on Amazon for like five bucks. Yeah. Piece of cake. And I, I will usually only take the bitter melon if I, during the day, I had a, like too many carbs. I will usually put bitter melon in my, uh, my stack before I go to sleep to bring the blood sugar down while I'm sleeping. So it is what it is. Yeah. Have you heard about that one, Dave? Better I have, yes. And also um milk thistle and uh dandelion root. Yep. Yep. The milk thistle is a, more of a liver protectant. There you go. There this is. is definitely anti-inflammatory and helps in reversing some of that liver damage. Again, um, wherever you choose to shop, but super easy to get. Uh see if it focuses here. This yeah, is a I pretty good one. Uh, what is this? Zazzy. This brand is pretty good. So yep. easy to get. And the, the best way that you can get dandelion root is to just go out in the wild and pick it yourself. Mm -hmm. Make sure that it is in a non-fertilized area, wild flower. Depending on where you're at. Yeah. <laughs> Any, Not around by you, me. <laughs> don't, don't pick your dandelions no. that grow in your yard because those have been fertilized to yeah. hell. And actually, I have dandelion root in my herbal tea. So yeah. I put four or five different types of stuff. Yep. So if if you guys decide to go out on a hike or whatever, go <clears throat> walk through a meadow or something and you see some dandelions, pick them bastards because that is dandelion root is pretty damn healthy for you. All right. No, I saw in the, really uh, oh, the comments really quick, too. Um, yeah. I would avoid, especially if you have fatty liver or inflammation, I would especially advise against aspirin 
ibuprofen oh, yeah. if you have to. Aspirin is going to actually cause Aggravate. more inflammation long term. Yeah. 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 And here's another one that a lot of people don't seem to understand that goes a long way to uh, getting, uh, knocking back a lot of that inflammation damage is glutathione and NAC. Mm. NAC. Yep. Both of those are super antioxidants for the human body. And if you have inflammation going on in the background, you have to realize that along with inflammation comes damage because your body's like, oh, something's fucked up. Or it sends resources there, scar tissue to stop the inflammation. And the longer it goes on, the more that crap accumulates. So there you go. You want to, that glutathione, basically, uh, it stops a lot of that inflammation at, you know, at the chemical process level. It's an antioxidant. Because typically, we live in an oxygen-rich environment, and as you age, your body rusts. Yeah, called um, oxidization, and it actually. I want to. I want to add another thing. Um, I'm going to kind of break down mine very quickly. But um, if you plan on doing the ketogenic diet, which again I highly recommend you look into. Here's something you're going to want to add to this. Okay, you're going to want your electrolytes. What I do. This is exactly how I do it. I'm going to show you. So potassium, magnesium. This brand I find is a little rough on the stomach in the morning, especially if you haven't eaten. You should have food. If you eat this, you should, but I'm a masochist. I digress. So you want your potassium, magnesium in the morning, not in the evening because it's going to uh, affect your sleep cycle. Okay. Do not take that in the evening. You're going to want your apple cider vinegar before meals. If you want to do it in liquid, it's more effective with the mother. You can do it in tablet form as well. It's not as effective. I recommend, like they were saying, the actual liquid form as well. But you can supplement with this if you absolutely cannot stand the taste. For me, this is convenient, easy. I can take it you know, with me wherever I go, especially when I'm in an office. Uh, B12, of course, every day. Again, these are morning. Everything I'm showing you right now is morning. So... All of these, potassium, magnesium for electrolytes, uh, your B12, and, of course, your apple cider and vinegar before meals, okay? Then in the evening, and again, some of these are just for maintenance. Some of these are for um, your metabolism and as well as your immune system. I like to take zinc in the evening. These are evening pills now. These are an hour or two before bed. Zinc, okay, again, helps with the immune system. Uh, so forth and so on. You can also add in D3 before bed. It's going to aid in sleep. Do not take this in the morning. Take this a few hours before bed. If you take this in the morning, you're going to find that you're very groggy throughout the day. Ask me how I know. Don't do that. Made that mistake. Okay. Um, if you found uh, that you do have fatty liver and you're struggling with gallbladder issues as well, Dr. Berg, most expensive thing I have on this list, gallbladder formula. You just type in Dr. Berg gallbladder formula on the internet. You'll find it. Okay. That's Boom. an evening pill as well. Evening pill berberine. Okay. That's another one. We talk about bitter melon here briefly. That is an evening pill as well for me. You have been, you can take it in the morning. You've What's been that? Paying, you've been paying attention to the pop lessons. Finally on the evening list is milk thistle. There you go. All right. And there it is. <laughs> uh, he's pretty much covered everything right there. <laughs> I mean, the only the only thing I can add on to that that will assist with inflammation is there an, an enzyme called Sera, uh was it S E R R A peptase peptase Sera peptase oh peptase yes yeah that one goes a long way uh, it's a very potent anti-inflammatory and it helps your body disassemble fibrin which is the building block of scar tissue mm. you know. Another one, uh, Pop, that you know more about uh, than I do, uh, but I've, I've, I've heard it goes along well with bile salts, which is what this gallbladder formula is. To break it down for you, um, it is uh, pepsin, pancreatin, betaine, hydrochloride. There's some fancy words in there. Ox bile extract, um, bile acid, and stone root with slippery elm. Okay, but another one they talk about is Tudka taken along with this. Uh, if you were having those pains, that nerve thing I was talking about, that's it's weird, it's connected, it is. Um, Tudka with bile salts definitely helpful. 
Mm-hmm. I got one more here, and then we're going to go to Super Chats. All right. This is a herb from India. I'm going to spell it for you. B-H-I-R-I-N-G-R-A-J. All right. Now, this is one that you use if you already have actual liver damage. This is reported to assist your own body in regenerating areas in your liver that are legitimately already damaged. Please research it all myself for yourself. Just just research it. Don't believe me at my word. Look it up for yourself. Okay? I'm not a doctor. We're not telling you to take any of this stuff. We're just recommending it because of our own experiences. We take this stuff. Um, two more and we'll be done. Pantex ginseng and ginger. Mm. You cannot, like, they've been using ginger and ginseng in China for, you know, four or 5,000 goddamn years. There are a lot of benefits to those. They cannot hurt you at all. Unless you decide to get stupid and eat like you know a two or three ounces at a time, <laughs> or decide to uh, try to uh, harvest it yourself in the backwoods of Appalachia and happen to stumble in a uh, Mary Jane Do You Wanna field. Yep. Because uh, well, them, them backwoods hillbillies, they'll uh, they just they know they know where to uh, dig a hole. Again, you want we pound. <laughs> one in three Americans have this problem. Mm-hmm. There's a lot of single men and veterans who watch this show who do not have the benefit of having a woman at home or somebody to cook for them. Because let's face it, if you ate a absolute perfect balanced diet every day, you wouldn't need all of these supplements. But we don't. Most of the micronutrients in the food that you're supposed to have is no longer there. And you have to take measures to unfuck yourself. Mm-hmm. All right, so please, just take this with a grain of salt. But in the back of your mind, realize that you could be one of the three out there. And you just don't know it yet. Watch Grunt Speak Live every Tuesday and Thursday at 8 p.m. Eastern. And if you want to join Pop for support or Sundays, go to redonculus.com slash donate and make a monthly pledge. A link is in the meat gazer box.